Hello, everyone. I said, hello, everyone. What's good? I am so happy to have all of you in the building. Welcome to Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute. My name is Sharon Nyree Williams. I am the executive director for the Central District Forum for Arts and Ideas. And my job today is to tell you, one, a little bit of housekeeping. Welcome to the 50th anniversary. Did I say 50? Can you say 50? Can you say 50? 50. Can you say 50 more? 50 more. 50 more. 50 more. Thank you, because I'm from North Carolina. You got to say more. You don't got to pronounce the whole word. We know exactly what you talk about. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, in the case of an emergency, we go right back out those two doors, and we go directly out, or we go over here to the right, whatever is Is this my right? Yeah. Uh, we go over here to the right. Uh, right out this door into the street. Don't go too fast. Don't run into the street because I can't help you once you get in the street now. Um, so stay on the sidewalk. I appreciate you. If you need to use the restroom, there's two restrooms at the top of the steps all the way behind that big box in the middle. You can use those restrooms. If you need an accessible gender neutral restroom as well, and both of those restrooms are gender neutral, might I add. Um, you can go out this door to the left and go take the elevator or take the steps down to the second floor. All right, everybody got it? Yeah. All right, if you, if you got it, say 50. 50. Thank you very much. Y'all here to have a good time? Yeah. That's what's up. Appreciate you. OK, now my other job is to welcome to the stage our MCs for today. No, it's not me. <laughs> um, and nobody gave me a script, so I get to say, they told me I could say whatever I want because I know them. Really? Oh, y'all don't know what y'all just did. Um, so the first gentleman that I would like to introduce is Mr. Steve Sneed. And y'all already know who Steve Sneed is. Well, let me tell you, ah! <laughs> and he's here. Uh, he's a legend. Uh, he's one of the reasons why we're all here. Uh, he helped keep, build this foundation for us to be here for 50 years. And he still looks like he's 20 years old. <laughs> no. <laughs> Our next MC for today is also a legend. Isaiah Anderson, Jr. <laughs> now, this young man didn't wash my car today because I didn't have on a skirt. <sighs> I didn't know what to do. But the summer musical? What? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I said, how many of y'all grew up with the summer musical? Yeah. How many of your careers started in the summer musical? Ooh. How many of your careers started on this stage? Yes. Thanks to Steve Sneed, <laughs> Isaiah Anderson Jr., and millions and millions more. We out here to kick it, y'all. I'm giving, I'm handing it over because I'm talking too much. Steve Sneed, Isaiah Anderson Jr., happy 50th! 50! Yeah, yeah. 50! Uh, <sighs> Boy, there's a lot of energy in the room. A lot of energy. Can y'all give it up one more time for Miss Sharon Nairis yes. Williams, a boss in her own right? Well, um, I'd just like to welcome you all here. Thank you for coming. Uh, just a little bit about me, because it's not about me, but <laughs> <laughs> I performed here in 1974, and um, it was at the Black Community Festival. I was... Uh, I was probably about 17 years old. Uh, I met my wife that year. Vita, there she is in the audience. <laughs> but the thing that I remember most of all is that it was so crowded that people were sitting on the steps. And our group, our African drum and dance group, marched in on the steps. And we had to march over people to get <laughs> in. I mean, it was packed. And, uh, and it was live. And uh, uh, that's the spirit that I remember of Langston Hughes. 
Now, I worked here for between 1989 and 2000, and there were many, many people who worked with me during that time. It was really a challenging time, but it was great fun. We did a lot of things. We put this thing up, and it makes me think of Mark Smith. Mark Smith, yes. Single-handedly, right? Yes. Yeah. He put that thing up, and um, I don't know, a lot of people may not realize, but Vivian Phillips helped it get approved. Because uh. <laughs> we, we felt we could get, um, instead of getting permission, we got forgiveness. <laughs> So, uh, but throughout the day, I think I'll ask you all, how many, what other names do you remember during those times? Darcel Hubbard, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, many, many others. Umeme. Yeah. Umeme yeah. Pese, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bobby, Wooten. Bobby Wooten, yes, yeah. He's in the house, Bobby Wooten, yeah. yeah. Living black ain't easy, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. So I'll stop now. Well, no, I just, I just want to say, um, first of all, how, how honored I am to be here in this space. I feel like a kid right now, I promise you, I do. Because um, I was telling Steve and those guys earlier that a lot of people get to say, oh yeah, my mentor was, and he lived, or she lived, and they, and my mentor lives. <laughs> right here and I mean I got to Seattle in November of 1984 I left Chicago it was 12 below zero when I left Chicago and I got to Seattle in 1984 a year and a so later I met Darcel Lorraine Hubbard yeah. uh -huh. and she befriended me and, and started taking me everywhere she was going and I was sharing that the first day I walked into Langston Hughes I walked through the double doors downstairs. There was no elevator. <laughs> yeah. It was just a, a, a door I, that opened and I heard this. Mm -hmm. And I heard it from a distance. Yeah. Had never heard it before in my life. And I was like, where is that coming from? What is that? But as I'm walking down the hall to hear where that's coming from, I look to the left in this big room and there's kids dancing. And I said, my God. Then I see this white dude Mark Smith, teaching martial arts. I said, what is this place? <laughs> and as I get to the back, I look in this West Room, and it's empty, but I keep hearing this beat coming out of there of some doop, 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 boop, 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 boop. I said, what is that? And I look in, and Cherie Saretze was sitting yeah. at that right. particular one and went to town. I, it felt like she waited for me to look in. Because at first all I heard was boop, 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 boop. And I said, oh, that's cute. And I look in, and as soon as she saw me, she was like <laughs> And I said, what did I just step into? And it literally brought life to me. I had been entertaining, but I had never had a platform that was specifically for me until I walked into this space. And this many years later, I am truly honored and I feel like that kid again, that 20 year old kid that walked into this space and said, this is where I wanna be. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I wanna say thank you to everyone mm -hmm. who played a role in that. Yeah. Everyone who played a role in that. Yeah. Everyone mm -hmm. who played a role in that. Yeah. Because without you, I promise you, there is not this Isaiah Anderson Jr. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Yeah, that's great, Isaiah, yeah. Yeah, and it's so true. I mean, we stand on the shoulders of so many others that come before us. And uh, otherwise, we're not here. We're inspired. I'm inspired by Black Arts West, Khabibi Monet. I'm inspired by Charles Canada, who some people may not remember. Ralph McCoy. I can name the names of people who inspired me and led me uh, to do what I did. 
So um, at this time, I don't know how much time we have or what, <laughs> but um, I think someone else is going to, who's? <laughs> Boom, right there, right there, right okay, there. Okay, all right. I get to bring up. That's right. My job. I see it. <laughs> We are going to bring some individuals to this. And just to give you guys a little bit of what's going to happen, we're going to introduce some, some individuals. They're going to come up and speak on behalf of their history and, and, and what Langston is and has meant to them. We'll have some honorees, some honoring being done. And then at some point, we're going to move downstairs where we're going to have some, some entertainment. We're going to have some stuff going on. But we're going to have some entertainment up here as well. So we just want you guys to sit back, relax. We purposely did not give you a program. <laughs> Oh, wait, we got to tell them, no, there's food outside. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's vendors. There's food outside. And vendors downstairs. Yeah. So we want you guys to make sure you, you, you touch bases with them. But we purposely did not give you a program because we don't want you to be uh, rushing us. <laughs> we don't want you to say, that ain't what the program say. <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't need that from you today. We don't need that from you today. <laughs> what we need you to do is just sit back and go with the flow. Is that all right? Yeah. Can somebody say 50? 50. Can somebody say 50? 50. Okay, now I'm from Chicago. My whole family's from Mississippi. Can somebody say 50? 50. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm saying 50. I am getting ready to bring up um, a lady who was a legend in her own right. Um, the first time I had the chance to meet her, um, she brought her daughter to the Teen Summer Musical. Oh, yes. She brought her daughter and I put her in the that. Teen Summer yeah. Musical. Mm -hmm. And she made quite the impression on me. <laughs> and then I got a chance to work with her, if you will, here at Langston Hughes. And she made quite the impression on me. <laughs> and then I had the opportunity to not work with her. <laughs> and she put quite the impression on me. As she has, I'm clear, to most of you, but she's one of a kind. So yes, please put your hands together for the acting director of the Office of Arts and Culture, the one and only Royal Ali Barnes, y'all. Put your hands together right now. impression on me. More importantly, they've made an impression on our children, on our community, and in our brains and in our hearts where our generational wealth grows. May we hear it, the loving, loving sound of applause for Steve Sneed and Isaiah Anderson. If I might, we acknowledge that we are on the indigenous land, the traditional territories of the Coast Salish people. This acknowledgement does not take the place of authentic relationships with indigenous communities, but serves as a first step in honoring the land we are on. And we as a people, as an African diaspora, we know about honoring the land and honoring our communities and our culture. That's why we're here today. Let's hear it. I think it was, was it Sharon Williams, CD Forum, Executive Director, what did she say? Did she say 50 more? Or did she say 50 more? And that's what we're trying to have here. And that's what we're doing right now. And so we're here today really in response to black brilliance, our black and brown diaspora. And you know, we all come and we celebrate like this, but we also have to remember that we want to thank Sandra Boyce Dupree, who's our facility manager. <laughs> Lavelle Davis, the facility administrator. Dominique Thomas, all of this. He inherited the stuff that Mark started. And then Tim Lennon, who's the current and exciting executive director of Langston, Tim. And hosting us all today. And we all have our little placards and our signs and everything that tells us where we are because of an amazing, brilliant, black male 
artist, yes, I'm calling it out, cisgender black male artist, Damon Brown. Brilliant. So as you all know, it's the individual artists who are really the core of all of this, of the arts and the culture that we hold so dear. It's the core. But it is the community, and you're going to hear that word over and over and over. It's the community, the people who make it happen, who bring life as a collective group of humans seeking to gather, seeking co social cohesion, seeking and making generational wealth. This is a wealth where we're sitting here today. Years ago, our community needed this place, a place to gather, to survive, and thrive. As you've heard from both Isaiah and, Isaiah and from Steve, tough times. Those were tough times. It's hard today. It was hard then. So take a moment and imagine a number of people that you probably don't think about. Walter H. Hunley. Walter H. Hunley, I'm going to say that name one more time, Walter H. Hunley, iconic, legendary, visionary. He, and a name I know you don't know, Jeffrey Tucker, community outreach specialist for Model Cities, said, this synagogue is a place that is being offered to us that we can gather. And they brokered that deal with our Jewish community allies and friends in a very difficult period of time and brought that into Mall Cities. And then in turn, we saw Walter Hunley move from Mall Cities to the city budget office, so it got money and funding. And we saw him moving to the Parks Department and they owned it and take care of it even to this day. And then we also saw him simply say, over time, this is a cultural gathering space and his legacy and heirs have used it and have totally embraced it and represent that generational wealth that we're talking about. So this facility has been brought into the public sector as Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute and the fact that it's here today tells you that the millions and millions of hours, and you heard this from Sharon Williams as well, the millions of hours of black community, family and friends have invested here and are engaged here, youth to adult, and adults bringing more youth. And there are many names, Wendy, Willie Campbell, J.T. Stewart, Francine Majors, Umeme, so beloved, Sherry Spark, you're gonna see her here today, Lori Chiaradai, Kofi Annan, James Lolly, Rico Bimri, Steve Sneed, we just saw Steve, like your shirt, Steve, and Jackie Mosco, and performing and others, and performing and other luminaries from Gil Scott Heron to Charles Johnson and believe it or not, Octavia Butler. So we are a community of artists. We are a community who engages, who holds in our heart our generational wealth in the arts. So we have come home again. In some cultures there's a saying, you can't go home again. That is not true in the black community. We have come home again and again and again to Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute. So right here, we know gentrification is painful, but we are gathering yet again here today. So as a group that talked about this, I'm gonna quote them, can't rap like them, but I'm gonna quote them in proper English. Uh, <laughs> our diggable planet friends, right? Bringing back some memories, and here it goes. And it's good to be here, getting fly with the raps. We love it where we from, but we kick it where we at. It's good to be here. Let's hear it for all of those generationals of wealth. It is good to be here. So I would like to take this opportunity, and it's my privilege, to introduce to you someone who you have known, but you didn't know you knew her, because she was out there dancing in the streets, literally, before she was the chief of staff for Mayor Bruce Harrell's office. Yes, 1975, I was an adult in those days, and it was called Keep On Trucking. Remember Keep On Trucking? Let's hear it for Keep On Trucking. And so it's my pleasure to introduce someone who was 
a central participant and maker of that group, that dance group, and who has not stopped trucking since, Chief of Staff for Mayor Bruce Harrell's office in Seattle for our community, for our city, COS Jennifer Samuels. COS. Oh, my secret's out. You're going to get me in trouble. You're going to get me in trouble. Director Royal Alley Barnes, thank you. Thank you. You know, it is incredible to be here today. And it's about time. It's really about time to tell the truth. It's about time to create space and to celebrate the people who made history in this city. We made history in this city, we made history in this state, and I dare say, I, I think we made history nationally. And the reason why I say that, there is a legacy that's here at the Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute. Langston has been and is the center and has been so for 50 years, as we know, 50 years and more. We have been the center we have been the hub, and it is a space of artistic black brilliance in Seattle. You know, when I think about uh, those days um, with Keep On Trucking, I, I tell you, when I walked in, I was kind of like Isaiah when I walked into this space. I still wonder if I was dreaming. I don't know, Steve, Steve Vita, Rico, I, did, were we, I'm trying to remember this now. This, this was in 75, 76. And my memory is pretty good, but, but help, help a sister. Help a sister. Was, was that Barry, uh, Barry White and the Love Orchestra that we? Yes. OK, 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 I got that straight. Um, let me see. Was that uh, the Ohio Players? Do you remember that? You did? Okay. Um, it was? Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. And then, um, let me see, it was uh, somebody called Grover Washington. Those are a few. Those are the few uh, of the acts that I remember, okay? But then I remember right here on this stage, some of the routines were just amazing. I, I have to give it to you. There were people that came all the way from Hollywood and sat up there watching every move, right? And then three weeks later, it'd be on national TV. I'm just saying something. I, that's why I say I think we were, we were kind of national. We had a reputation here in Seattle. That was in 75, 76. Yeah. But I tell you, Langston has history. Langston is a legacy, and it is born from redlining when Jewish and our communities of color were segregated in our city. And you know what? It was a fight. We respect and we are in amazement at this beautiful Byzantine edifice, this Jewish synagogue, Shevra Becker Holam. This space, it first opened up its, to its doors about 107 years ago. This is a blessing. The young people didn't come here to really think about the past necessarily, but let me tell you, to be successful and prosperous in anything, you have to remember your past as you go towards your future. So, Director Allie Barnes shared um, about Walter Hunley. Let me tell you a little more about him. In 1971, Seattle Model Cities director bought this edifice into the city family. And it opened up its doors in 1972 as a community center. And guess what? 
it hasn't closed its doors yet. Okay. I want to celebrate J.T. Stewart, who gave us the name Langston Hughes, and all of the evolutions of naming it. It took us to where we are today, the Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute. Along that way, the stories have been vibrant and studded with luminaries like Gil Scott Heron, Joe Brazil, and Nana Kabidi. Thank you. I'm acknowledging you, but your time is coming. <laughs> So back in the day, the Washington State Council of Negro Women hosted the first black woman in film festival. And the Paul Robeson Theater was first developed and created here, and it continues today. I tell you, I, I was at the Teen Summer Musical. Man. The community came from everywhere to watch these young people. I was here one night and I had to go back and get my grandkids. I bought four of my grandsons and we watched it again, okay? It was fun. If you missed it, I, I, I don't know. What, can, they, can they see it? Can, is there an opportunity for them to see it? I think you can see the, there may be a video coming out soon. There's a video coming out. You're editing the film now. Thank you, thank you. It was phenomenal. So you want to watch that. So let's continue to keep our eyes and come together and learn from each other. Reconcile the past with our present so we do not lose our momentum. So I know that the next 5, 10, 25 years will hold Langston as a public city center for gathering of communities from all across Seattle to celebrate the arts. We are safeguarding this gift, our future, and investing in the city's commitment to the arts. The mayor is committed to this. The beauty of this black artistic journey is that it is here. It is in the public se sector, and it is for the public to enjoy. The city is at the forefront, hand in hand, with the black community its artists, and its nonprofits. This is all one Seattle. We all know that there have been hard times in this city, especially in the central area. It's painful. Gentrification, displacement of families because of the cost of living in Seattle. This thing is real. Lehigh is a place. Langston is a people place, a gathering place, evidence of how we care for generational wealth as a city. You know, you know, I, I tell you, this place is dear to me, and it has really propelled me in my life when I think about my beginnings here. We have to guard, safeguard this treasure, this jewel, Langston. I said all this to say, celebrate today. Keep your faith, keep your families, your friends, and your community strong. Have fun today. Love you all. I'll give it up one more time. Please, please, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, somebody took my paper. Was that you? Folded in half? You sure? Was it Barnes? No. Some, somebody took something. Okay, thank you. I'm 
I'm just saying. I know what I need. <sighs> oh, this is easy. This is easy. Um, for the record, though, I just meant to need you to know that Steve said it was 1974. Yes, he was backstage. He kept saying that he wanted to make sure you get it right. 74 is when he graduated, it's when he met Vita. That's, that's his two things right there. I'm, oh, you introduced the two of them? You think? <laughs> Look at Vita's like this. No, you didn't. You better stop it. No, you didn't. <laughs> hey, me. Um, this next person coming up, you guys, um, I've been knowing a long time because at, for a long time he's been my boss. Uh, and so we have come to know each other pretty good. Um, he is a, a, a real cool cat, is what I like to call him. Real cool cat. So you guys, please put your hands together for the acting, acting superintendent of the Department of Parks and Recreation, Mr. Christopher Williams, please. All right, sir. Uh-oh, can you hear me now? Okay, that's better. I better come a little closer, huh? All right, well, it's so great to see so many uh, people who got their start in the city right here at Langston Hughes and people who've worked here over the years. Isaiah Anderson, remind Isaiah to tell you the story about pigeons and egos. Eagles. Isaiah, are you back there? All right, bro, you remember that story about the pigeons and the eagles? Eagles who thought they were chickens? Yeah, yeah, that one, that one, okay. That's it. One day ask him to tell you that story because that's an example of a remarkable uh, story that's been shared with probably generations of young people. And I was so struck by it. I sat in a seat right over here and heard this story about if you want to have aspirations, in life to do something big, then you have to surround yourself with people who are aspiring to do big things. And as I thought about that, and I probably heard the story maybe 10 years ago from Isaiah, but it just made me think about how many times a story like that was told to a group of young people here in this theater uh, it also makes me think that this is not just a community center. This has been a transformational space to capture our young people while they are in the hope stages of their development. There is no greater uh, goal for a community than to raise our children and to inspire hope, to help them find their gifts, to help them aspire to bigger and greater dreams. And this is what Langston Hughes has done over the course of its history. I am so honored to have been asked to be here today. Uh, I go back 29 years in Seattle Parks and Recreation. I've seen a lot of summer teen musicals. I've seen a lot of uh, uh, just, you know, kind of energy around how are we gonna get the roof repaired? What about that plumbing leak here? What about a lot of those things that need to happen that keep the doors open to the this building. We are committed as a public park and recreation department, the owners of the building, uh, to care for it to, uh, through that partnership with the Office of Arts and Culture. We are committed that if the building needs a new roof, new seats, whatever this space needs to keep the doors open, we are right there to provide the resources to make that happen. So I want to just kind of put that out in the atmosphere that um, Long-term sustainability of an asset like this is very important to what the city of Seattle does and what we can provide. And while the park department doesn't necessarily have a lot of theater people here, which is why we kind of made the wise decision to transfer this asset to the Office of Arts and Culture several years ago, uh, we can stand behind good maintenance. And uh, that's what we can bring to this partnership. So I want to thank all the families and the kids and the people who are here who perhaps have performed. And you know what, just by a show of hands, is anybody here who 
performed in a teen summer musical at any point in time? Okay, so let's give them a hand. All right. Hey, nothing like a good homecoming. And I heard there's going to be some black eyed peas or something later. Is that right, Royal? <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much. We appreciate the partnership. And thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you. OK, so <laughs> this next individual I'm going to introduce is someone that I first met on the radio. It was KYAC. Who remembers KYAC? <laughs> oh, boy. And I felt like I knew her because I heard her voice all the time on the radio. And then I got the opportunity, really the privilege, to work with her in the trenches here at Langston and at the Madrona Community Center and um, just for the past, I don't know, mm, years. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it is my, pri my privilege to introduce Vivian Phillips. Thank you, and thank you, Steve. Um, I came to spill the tea. So, no, not really. Um, I'm really honored to participate today. I'm really grateful that Langston and Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute is so vibrant 50 years after it was started. What an incredible feat. And I have to say that the first time I ever walked into this building, I was actually a teenager, and I came to the Bicker Holom Synagogue for a bar mitzvah, because I grew up in this neighborhood and grew up with Jewish families, and I got a chance to come in here. This place, for me, has been the beacon of my entire career. Now, Steve roped me into working with him back in the 80s with the Madrona Youth Theater in the basement of the Madrona Presbyterian Church. Y'all remember that place? Talk about leaks. That was a wet floor place all the time. And I didn't really want to do it. You know, I had left my career in radio and, or I should say I took a hiatus and um, started working in public relations and then found this new energy here at Langston Hughes to work with uh, Steve Sneed. Fun fact, um, he mentioned that one of the things, yeah, you know, politics is all about asking for forgiveness, not permission. So, so I could be a politician, you all know that. But um, when we found out that there was like six, seven hundred thousand dollars in the general fund at the city of Seattle that had been granted by the, the uh, United States Parks Service, to Langston and it had never been used, you know we trotted right on up in that office and said, we need that money. But we did, <laughs> yes, I'll wait, clap. <laughs> but we did secure over a million dollars and in 1990, 1991, a million dollars to go into a space like this was a lot of money. And fun fact for me is that this building was designed by Benny Proteca, who was also the designer of the interior of the Paramount Theater. And so that's how my career with the Paramount got started. After working on this place, I got a chance to go to a different home where that architecture was beautiful. So every time you go into the Paramount, check out the domes and you'll see the resemblance there. Um, I do want to also just say about Steve Sneed, because we joke a lot and we have a lot of fun, but Steve doesn't get nearly the credit that he deserves. S Steve is not just a committed community um, person, but he's a, as my parents would say, he's a learned person. He knows what he's talking about when he talks about the arts. When Steve bought Dr. Margaret Burroughs, who is the founder of the DuSable Museum in Chicago, to Seattle, to Langston, I'd never heard of her before. But that's the kind of person that Steve was. Steve, oh, I'm sorry, is. Um, <laughs> 
You still that kind of person. <laughs> um, when Steve's innovation created the program called Dis Discipline, Confidence, and Motivation, which was the precursor to the summer musical, it was a groundbreaking program. And it said to the world that the arts are essential to learning. You know how I feel about that. I have to say that Isaiah was a part of that DCM project, and I want to say congratulations to Isaiah and Michelle Lang Raymond for your success with Acts on Stage. It all started here. A lot of names have already been called. I'm so grateful that Walter Huntley's name was called. Jim Williams is someone else who worked at the Model Cities program way back when. Roberta Bird Barr was also part of that program. And I want to say that there were a number of people who were responsible for supporting this organization through all of its iterations. The daughter of Walter Huntley, Phyllis Yasutaki. Carol Wells, who is here today. Yvette Parr, Juan Huey Ray, who recently passed away, Gina Gardenhire, Gilda Shepard, they all worked on the first renovation of the, pro of the building. I also need to call out Paul Tolliver, Capri St. Ville, Doreen Mitchum, they were all a part of the early film festival. Um, We've talked a lot about uh, the building. We've talked a lot about the edifice. We've talked a lot about what this space means. But this space means nothing without the people. This is all about building relationships. I have built relationships that I will have for the rest of my life. And I know that's true for so many people here. So I am just so gratified that we have an opportunity to say thank you to one another and to be in a space that was created as a sacred space and for 50 years has continued to be a sacred home for our black community. So with that, we want to recognize a few people. And I'm so excited that I get to do this. This, is, this makes my heart really um, full. The first person that we want to recognize is Mr. T. Denard. <laughs> T. is not here today, but this letter reads, on our 50th anniversary, it is a privilege to recognize you for your contribution to the legacy of black brilliance, black artistic brilliance at Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute through Black Arts West, founded by Douglas Q. Barnett. You have been a feature in Seattle Arts as an actor, director, and as a former artistic director of Black Arts West in the 1970s, the first black theater company in the city of Seattle. Black Arts West produced many plays at Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute, including Jaime Finkelstein's Used Lumber Company, Company I know y'all don't remember that, and Ernest Fan, among many, many others. Your artistic contributions, DT, if you are listening right now, if you hear this, if you feel it, your artistic contributions through Black Arts West are important aspects of Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute's history and by extension, Seattle's cultural legacy. The Office of Arts and Culture celebrates you for your committed artistic focus in developing Seattle's arts landscape, signed Royal Alley Barnes. And I think on behalf of T. Denard, I would like to invite Cedric Denard. Cedric. Would you like to say a couple of words? A couple of words. That means she 50 at the most. Okay, there, she said 50. So, okay. um, first ahead, of all, my name is Cedric Denar. Cedric, not Cedric. Cedric. Yep, yep, Cedric. Uh -huh. okay. And um, so I'm real honored 
to be um, accepting this on behalf of my father, T. Denard. Um, and he, he sent me a, um, a book to read to you guys, but I'm only gonna read a paragraph, all right? No, I'm lying, I'm, I'm making jokes. But um, here it is, and, and also he couldn't be here on behalf of, um, he has medical issues, and he was still trying to be here, even though it wasn't possible, but he wanted to be here, but um, I took his place. But he says, um, I just wanna thank Royal Ali Barnes and Sandra Bose Dupreeze who was so helpful getting me all the information about today's event through my medical issue. issue. I'd like to acknowledge four real honorees for making Black Arts West possible, for, possible and a success. First and foremost is founder Mr. Douglas Q. Barnett, artistic director, Buddy, um, Buddy Butler, production manager, Rafiq Bay, and Umami, Umami, did I say it right? Oops, what is it? Oops, oops, PC. He said don't get it wrong because I was going to get it. Um, okay, she said it. That's what she said. Who was an actor and musician, all whom are, are no longer with us, but I'm sure they're in a big theater production playing up there somewhere on those golden streets. Last but not least, I'd like to thank Douglas Johnson for allowing me to be the artistic director of his administration of Black Arts West and the baton was passed to Khabibi Moni, right? Monet, Monet. And, she, and she kept the spirit of B-A-W -E alive with New Black Arts West. So on behalf of my father, thank you for this. Thank you for correcting the pronunciation of your name, Cedric. Tell Tiofa we said hello, okay? Because I know his name is Tiofa, right? All right, I got that right. Okay, I'm not gonna put that in my pocket. Okay, um, let's see. Oh, this one really touches my heart. <sighs> and I have to read it. Dear Bobby Wooten, On the 50th anniversary of Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute, it is a privilege to recognize you for your contribution to the legacy of Langston Hughes Performing Arts through Paul Robeson Theater Company, which you co-founded with Harvey Blanks in 1980. In Harvey Blank's memory, the community celebrates his contributions as well. Paul Robeson Theater was overflowing with inspiration, primarily for the black community, including youth and adults, and with its original musicals and adaptations of stories by BIPOC, authors, classes, and workshops in drama, dance, singing, and speaking. The following sample of stage plays gives a, a glimpse into the Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute stage of the past. Green Pastures, Desire Under the Elms, Mountain of the Shouting Sun, yeah. Hotel Happiness. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas is all up in the soul theory. And how a Christmas dream came true and the blockbuster Living Black Ain't Easy. Oh, alum all over there, yes! What's not mentioned here is the South African play by Otho Fugard, Master Harold and the Boys. The Paul Robeson Theater Company is an important part of Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute history, and the Office of Arts and Culture thanks you for your artistic brilliance in sustaining Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute. Warm regards, Royal Alley Barn. And ex Barnes, you can get that S on there. And on behalf of Bobby, although Bobby is here, right? I did see Bobby. All right, but on behalf of Bobby Wooden, Harold Kelsey, please come and accept this. Hey, hi, I'm great, good to see you. 
It is, it is my pleasure and honor. Mr. Bobby Wooten. All right, we're talking about brief. I love, I love that. Okay, so this next one is, mm, I feel it in my heart and I'm so glad that I get to do this because this is somebody who has been on this journey with us, leading us, beside us, and pushing us forward in so many, many ways that we don't have time to even tell you about, but I hope that at some point you'll do your research and find out more about Miss Kabibi Monet. <laughs> Not yet. Because what I wanna say first is, it is a privilege to recognize you for your artistic contributions to the legacy of Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute on its 50th anniversary. In 1993, you founded the New Black Arts West Theater, considered the oldest African-American community-based theater in the Pacific Northwest. You were an actress, and instructor with the original Black Arts West Theater from 1974 to 1980. You were a key champion in asking the city to recognize the founder of Black Arts West Theater, Douglas Q. Barnett, and his numerous contributions by naming a city block in his honor, which is at 34th and Union. And today, New Black Arts West continues to thrive under your leadership. New Black Arts West and its predecessor, Black Arts West Theater, are important aspects of Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute's history, and by extension, Seattle's cultural legacy. The Office of Arts and Culture celebrates you for your brilliance and decades of committed service to developing Seattle's art landscape. Signed, Royal Alley Barnes. Thank you, Khabibi. That's all I can say is wow. I have loved you all, all my life. And I didn't know if you really cared about me. You know, really, I mean, because a lot of times, you know, people dedicate their lives to people and they get used to it or, or they don't really recognize it because they feel that that is your place to be. And it is my place to be. My place was to follow Mr. Barnett's lead and keep black art in our community. Because, yeah, in the year. Because, believe it or not, melanated people love the arts, okay? We use the arts to learn and grow and build and thrive. And it was my duty from God, and it was my duty when I asked Doug if he wouldn't mind me bringing Black Arts West back. And he said, Khabibi, you sure you want to do that? I mean, people, you know, they weren't coming to see us back when, you know, when it went down. I said, that was just a hiatus. That was just for a moment. They were just waiting for the next person. And I guess I've been the one that selected to bring it back. And that's what I've been doing for almost 30 years now, literally almost 30 years, new Black Arts West Theater. Taking, thank you, taking students from Garfield to uh, Ghana, West Africa to perform or to start a study abroad pen pal um, relationship with the Twedi Alse Primary School in Ghana. From performing at the National Black Theater Festival in North Carolina um, to everything that we've been doing, including this was our first home. I'm talking about New Black Arts West Theater, not the original, but New Black Arts West Theater did our first production right here on this stage. And uh, yeah, yeah, please give it up. 
give it up. Without, without Langston Hughes, the arts, black arts would have disappeared. It would have literally disappeared because our, our clubs and our you know, places where we did music were folding up. And if it had not, y'all, on the real side, been for Langston Hughes, we would not be. There would be no new Black Arts West Theater. There'd be no um, Black Dodge. And, and the theater companies like the Sankofa Theater, that's a new Black theater, y'all. We got to pay attention to the new Black theaters. And we, as theater people, need to unite. The best way we're going to get the funding for what we're trying to get, our productions and, and a building and keeping our building intact, we have got to unite as a unit so that when we go for the funding, when we're, we're trying to get uh, new lights or, or, or having the funding to take our children out of the country so they can learn different skills, so they can be international. That's what New Black Arts West Theater has been about. We've been offering summer youth education programs for years, since, 20, since 2010, when the city decided we no longer need the summer school. And instead of doing our music, drama, and dance classes, I went to the teachers that take their summers off, that appreciate having to break from kids, and said, look, I'm going to go ask the community if they will fund. And I went to the community. I didn't go to the Four Culture. I didn't go to Art Artist Trust. I went to, the, to Tabor 100 for one organization that backed the money so I could pay the teachers for free classes for six weeks. Free to them, academic classes in math and science and literary arts. We discontinued our, you know, our artistic classes because we knew our children were behind on so many things and we need that help in the summer. So that's what we've been doing. We've been serving our community ever since Mr. Barnett and God told me to bring Black Arts West Theater back. That's what our motive has been. That's what our hearts have been. When I asked the city to recognize Mr. Barnett, that wasn't out of anything but love for him to give me the honor to keep black theater going. I love you all so much. Thank you for appreciating what I've done. Um, it means the world. God bless you, all of you. Thank you. <laughs> Khabibi is way more than a legend. I think when we say people are a legend, it's like, you know, but Khabibi, you are really the foundation upon which so many of us stand, and I just thank you. You know, I don't know that people know that you kept New Black Arts West alive at Washington Hall for a long time as well, with all the buckets around catching the drips, right? <laughs> oh, thank you so much. We so appreciate you. You know, I'm, I'm very serious when I say that this has been a place that continues to be a place where relationships are built. And imagine what Steve and I, and probably Isaiah too, feel like when you see people that you met when they were about this tall coming up on you talking about, <laughs> talking about, hey, I'm like, who are you? Back up. Because <laughs> you can't possibly be that grown. But it is actually a really warming um, experience to be called Auntie Viv or Uncle Steve or, you know, all those names that get assigned to you when you get old like us. So one of those individuals was popping and locking and twirling and twisting and flipping and doing all kinds of things that we all wish we had the muscles to do way back in the day. And she is still doing it. And we are so proud to ha have with us today, Miss Maxie Jamal. What? <laughs> It's such an honor to be here. This is where everything, everything began for me. I, um, I mean, everything. I don't even know what to say. Um, I wouldn't be able to be 
or do any of the things that I do today if it wasn't for this place right here. I started some of my first things right here on this stage. Langston Hughes for me was a place to be able to express um, and uh, as dancers would say, put it all, lay it all out on the floor. You know, this was the place where, um, especially in the 80s and 90s when uh, it was a tough place to be, you know. Um, I was able to get away and I was able to um, come here and find those artistic abilities and um, I mean every single, everything, I was able to find it right here in this place. I had amazing teachers, I had amazing people that were bringing us up and showing us the way, teaching us how to find those different things about ourselves, teaching us how to um, put these things on the stages, put these things in, in, in any form of art that we were discovering about ourselves. We, we were able to um, find all of that right here in this place. And uh, since then, I've been able to travel the world. I've um, trained a lot of the dancers here in Seattle that are training all the dancers. Um, and I was, um, I even started, I did the first, uh, I was the first kid to be able to do the summer musical with Isaiah. And I was the first, I, I had that opportunity and that was like a hard, it was kind of a hard little something to break through, but it was fun and it was challenging. All the things, you know, all the things that they gave us challenged us to be our best selves. And I'm really, truly grateful for this place. I wouldn't have been, been able to do anything, anything that I'm doing today. And also the, the inspiration that was put in us, you know, we, we were inspired. We were inspired to be able to, to travel, to go out there and do everything in the world that we do. We knew that we could do it just because of the people that were pouring into us and also being able to have the space to try everything out, you know, and do all that we do. Anyway, I'm totally grateful. I won't take up too much time. I'm totally grateful. I'm so, 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 so grateful for everyone that's contributed to this place, everyone and everything that was able to make this possible. Wow. Yeah. We thank you. Thank you all. Before this was Langston Hughes Cultural Arts Center, it was a Jewish synagogue, a place of spiritual gathering for the Jewish community. So we have a Albert Israel here from the Washington State Jewish Society to speak with us. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of you for, for having us here. And, and I hope you, you uh, I know I feel the, the, the history here in the teens and the 20s and the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, when it was a synagogue and countless weddings and countless bar mitzvahs, so many happy occasions took place here. And now that legacy continues in the 70s, 80s, 90s to today with you all, with the performing arts and the music and the drama. And it just, uh, the, the lesson I've learned today is that the, the Jewish community and the black community have so much history in common and we need to move forward together and maybe the next event can be a music festival together. That would be, boy, that would be fabulous. And maybe it can be here. So what, what, a, wonderful, what a wonderful bond that would create. So the, 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 the Jewish community thanks you all for including us today. Uh, we hope to be part of many other programs in the future. We thank you so much. All right. Wow. Um, we are going to simply continue with the pro. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, man, uh, can, okay. Ooh. <laughs> um, huh. She came up to do some honorees, and I don't think she got the right recognition. Um, can you guys please put your hands together for Ms. Vivian Phillips? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know she said she was honored to come up and give 
honor to those, but Vivian, we give honor to you. We give honor to you. And it may sometimes go unsaid, um, but it's never lost. Never lost. Never. Um, wow. Um, so I don't like to get emotional in public. I'm lying, I'm lying, I'm lying. Listen, I, I don't really care, I don't really care. Um, again, being here is just awesome for me. Um, when young Maxi Jamal came on this stage, I said, my God, <sighs> one of my kids, like what Vivian said, those, those kids walk up to you and they still call you Mr. Isaiah, and you in a nightclub, get away from me! calling me Mr. Isaiah in the nightclub, and you 40 years old. What is wrong with you? I am now Isaiah. It's all right. Jesus. Eight, nine, nine, eight, nine, ten years old, her and my son, Marcus Anderson, <laughs> called himself little boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> called little boyfriend and girlfriend. I, we had a big event, and I said, Marcus, where's Maxie? Ten years old. My son said, I don't know. I dumped her. I lost my mind. Do you hear me? I said, little boy, you don't dump nothing but garbage. You hear me? Maxie is a young black girl, and you better give her all the respect. Go find her right now. And he brought her back with tears in his eyes, apologizing because he knew I had a belt on that could soon be off. You hear me? But what I learned, what we learned, Steve and, and myself and Michelle and all of us who work with young people, what we learn is that um, we never stop learning. As long as we are in their presence, we never stop learning. I want to say to Seagrid, uh, you called me and I was out of town. And I was at the airport, and I said, I'll call him when I get back home. I got back home Wednesday night, and I missed your call. Cedric, you are my brother, and your father is a mentor to me as well. And so he has blessed Acts on stage, and he continues to bless us. So thank you, my brother, and I will definitely, definitely take you to dinner. You eat McDonald's? <laughs> Extra cheese. I pray. I, pr I promise. Um, I'd like... <laughs> I'd like to bring to the stage right now um, two individuals who are moving things forward, as everybody has spoken about. Um, they are the executive director uh, of the Langston uh, Foundation and the executive director of the CD Forum. Please put your hands together for Mr. Tim Lennon and Miss Sharon Nyree Williams. Emmy Award winning Sharon Nari Williams. <laughs> Put some respect on that. Put some respect on that. Emmy Award nominated, Emmy Award winning Sharon Nari Williams over here. Um, it is my sincere honor to be standing on this stage with all y'all in this theater today. Again, my name is Tim Lennon, I'm the executive director of Langston who along with the Central District Forum for Arts and Ideas are the resident programming organizations here within the Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute, tasked with building on the legacy that you all have been hearing about all day today. Um, honored is not even a strong enough word for it, but I, you know, I think of our role as that bridge between the 50 years we've been hearing about today, between that next 50 years that was alluded to earlier, you know, looking at theater programs going from Ms. Khabibi folks like Tim Bond, Valerie Curtis Newton, to new directors like Shermona, William, uh, Shermona, ooh, Shermona Mitchell and Reggie D. White, both of whom we've had productions done by this year. I'm thinking about, in terms of music, having folks like Julian Priester and also Casa Overall, Next Generation Talents. I'm thinking in terms of film, knowing that the Black Women in Film event happened here so many years ago, and knowing that this morning, Tiffany Bennett took a bus full of youth 
down to the Seattle Film Summit representing our Real Youth Film Camp program that we've had been uh, running here to educate the next generation of filmmakers. That's what I'm talking about in terms of passing on that legacy. And, and lastly, and critically, and, and I want to um, give such props to Isaiah for calling this out, um, this place has been a, a building that built the next generation of arts leaders. And we've had women like Vivian Phillips come through this building and shape my life, shape, shape Sharon's life, um, give us the starts that we needed in this industry. And we've also launched people like Ms. Jasmine Scott, who's about to work with Ms. Vivian Phillips on the next generation of black arts organizations here in Seattle. So we're doing this thing. We're going to be here for another 50 years because we're going to be doing it together and with one another. Thank you very much. Um, if you are an artist, a practicing or have practiced being an artist, can you either stand or raise your hand? lights, doing music, um, being a stage manager, any of those production jobs, costumes, raise your hand. Y'all don't know that it is an honor to be here. And there is no Tim and Sharon, Irie Williams, I mean, without all of you because there is no one to lead if we don't have black leaders to help lead you. And I wouldn't be here if I didn't get calls from Vivian Phillips holding me accountable. If I, didn't, if I couldn't pick up the phone and call Vivian Phillips and say, I don't know what to do. How do I do this work? If I don't be in the room with Vivian Phillips when she is questioning equity within the city of Seattle and I'm sitting there like, why am I here? How did I get on this board? And then I know that when I walk in rooms and I'm the only black person there, I can raise my hand and say, so what about equity when it comes to the search for the Cornish College of the Arts president? And we now have the new black president of Cornish College of the Arts. <laughs> See, what I'm, what I'm saying to y'all today is, it goes from the stage, but it's not just the stage. We are all in rooms and in networks right now where we're building each other up, where we're allowing this legacy of Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute, Cultural Center, Art Center, Performing Arts Center, whatever you want to call it, be into our blood, be into our bones as we go out there and change the world. We are all change makers. And we ain't doing it by ourselves. We need you, not just today, not just what you did in the past, but we need you in the future of this building. We need all of you, volunteer, show up. We need you to buy them tickets. If you can't buy a ticket, volunteer, we'll let you in. If you got a show, let us help you with your show. We're here to build. If we don't tell our stories, we can't get mad when everybody else tell our stories. If we don't hear our voices, we can't get mad when we hear other people's voices instead of ours, especially in a city like Seattle. CD Forum, Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute, Langston Historical Central Area Arts and Cultural District, we are all here for you in this building. This is your building, it has always been your building. We have just been fortunate enough to help lead it. But we need you to tell us when we BSing and not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Stephanie Ellis Smith started the Central District Forum in 1999. And I've been running it for nine years. And some of you I've never seen here before. I'm just gonna call it like I see it. I'm happy to see you today. I like you, but I would like to see you some more, cousin. i like to see you some more, friend, because we are worthy. They tried to push us out a few years ago. They tried to say the neighborhood was changing, so Langston Hughes should change too, and we 
sitting at the table with Vivian, sitting at the table with Royal, sitting at the table with Tim, sitting at the table said, oh, hell to the nah. We ain't going nowhere. You can take our houses, but you can't take our soul. We belong here in Seattle. We run this joint. There is no Seattle without black people. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. Oh, am I preaching? Oh, I'm sorry. I just want to say that Central District Forum for Arts and Ideas helped to build and develop black artists. And um, this is my last year running the Central District Forum. But let me tell you, I'm stepping aside so somebody younger than me or somebody that, that hasn't ran an organization yet can run a black organization. Because I've done it for 10 years. I've built all these relationships. Y'all better give me some work. Because if I have to leave Seattle, I'm coming to see y'all. But we are here to uphold the future of black arts and culture. And I just want y'all to know, every little bit counts. Whether you show up, all that's all we're asking. Show up. Donate to these wonderful organizations. Keep supporting all the new organizations that's coming in the neighborhood. We all do this together. We're not competing against one, and one another. We are lifting each other up. And the more of us that are doing this work, the more that we can challenge each other to be better in black brilliance. Because blackness is not a monolith, so it takes all of us to do this work. And that's why I got an Emmy.